Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today we're going to be talking about some pretty big breaking news over the last day involving David Pasternak and a potential trade away from the Boston Bruins. And this has been a situation that's been really bubbling over the past couple of days with Bruce Cassidy fired. There's been some recent reports from The Athletic stating that David Pasternak could be gone this offseason. But what are the details surrounding this situation? Could we see Pasternak actually trade and end? What teams would make him fit and actually get a deal done. Watch till the end for all the latest trade rumors and all the latest news and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are new. 50% of the people that are watching are not subscribed so if you like trade rumor content this channel is the place to be. Now this whole trade rumor started when Fluto Shinzawa from The Athletic Boston ended up posting an article that went over crazy talking about the Bruins situation and how their championship window has closed and there was a very interesting quote from this article talking about David Poston situation but honestly just thinking about the fact that we could see a posh knock trade this offseason makes it even more crazy free agency has so many different players available and if a top end guy like posh knock is available too i think at the draft time especially we could see a move made and could see a big deal happen and one of the biggest quotes from this article was really interesting about Poshnak's situation where Fluto wrote this. The Bruins could start 2022-23 down their first line combination in a Charlie McAvoy, Matt Grizzlick pairing that at times has served as their number one duo. A coaching change, surgeries to critical contributors, and a pending rebuild will not encourage David Poshnak to sign an extension with one year left on his deal. In fact, the right wing may be general manager Don Sweeney's best trade piece to trigger a teardown. And this is what's most interesting is because with Poshnak, he does have one year left on his deal. He is signed for next season, but after that, he will be a UFA after going past his $6.66667 deal, and he'll be on the potential market. But for the Bruins, we've heard, of course, with the surgeries of Charlie McAvoy and a bunch of other just brutal injuries of that Bruins core, that next season likely won't be too successful. And if this Bruins team really wants to get out ahead of it, a rebuild might be exactly what the doctor ordered and David Poshnak would certainly get a lot back. And when we look at the current Bruins situation, a rebuild is, in my opinion, exactly what Boston should do. Now, should Don Sweeney be in charge of things, especially how after how that 2015 draft went? Probably not. But at the same time with this current Boston team, although they have some great pieces, it feels like their championship window has closed truly. Or at least being a Stanley Cup winner, those days are long over. And I feel like with this Boston team, obviously they tried to go as hard as possible with Patrice Bergeron getting older and older, but at this point, it feels like it's a lost cause. Now, for David Pasternak, that would be one big reaction. He's 26 years old, and although he will be a UFA, it'll be an interesting trade to make, and obviously would signify a true rebuild in Boston. Now, we talked about with Patrice Bergeron, whether he's going to stay with Boston or retire. If they trade Pasternak, Bergeron is all over too. And for me, if I was Don Sweeney, if I was the Boston Bruins specifically, I would go full rebuild right now. This is a team that feels like it's outside the window, outside that picture of being a Stanley Cup contender, a true one, or a team that could actually win the Stanley Cup right now. And obviously, David Postdoc would be the, the biggest player to trade, potentially. At the same time for Boston, when you consider the situation they're in, that's a type of player that would definitely jumpstart quite well. With the Marshawn surgery, with McAvoy being out for a good chunk of next season with Mike Riley having surgery. There's a lot of players in this team that are going to be out for the start of the season and that would definitely disrupt the Bruins roster and the Bruins season even if everybody was there and everybody else was healthy. And to me I look at this Bruins team and I just see a sinking ship. Obviously David Pasternak would be the biggest player to trade. He'd get the most back and that's kind of why I see Boston doing it. As well with him not being signed up long term for him only having a year left Let's say the Bruins know that they're going to miss the playoffs next season. I feel like they also know there's a good chance of Pasternak leaving the team and going to a different contender. And at that point, why not trade him? And for David Pasternak as well, there is many reasons why he'd be desirable. Although he is a big risk being a UFA after next year, I feel like a lot of teams will take on that risk no matter what and won't really see it as much of a problem if the price is right. And for Pasternak, I mean, this last season, the regular season, he got in 72 games, 40 goals, 37 assists, 77 points, 6 points in 7 games as well in the playoffs. But you look at the seasons before, in 2021, 48 points, 48 games, in 2020, 95 
75 points in 70 games played. This is one of the best wingers and one of the best players in the entire NHL. Easily a top five winger, possibly a top three, and a top 10 forward if he's at his best across the entire league. This is a player that, if available, almost every single team is going to want, but I could only see really a few teams really going after him, especially with the price tag that Boston is likely to want. Now, here's the thing. If David Poshnak is obviously traded, it's going to be a big haul, but how much would it actually cost to get Poshnak? Now, I know I had Poshnak in a Devils jersey in the in the thumbnail, and that's actually a good example here. Let's say that the Devils want to trade for David Poshnak, which I'd assume they'd want to possibly do. I feel like the price tag would be interesting. Obviously, that second overall pick would have to be involved, but... I feel like it would have to be more as well on top of that. Potentially a good pick or a good prospect too. Maybe a player like Riley Walsh could be in that conversation even if he does look to be a big part of that Devils defense going forward. I think it would take a top three pick and a good prospect to really make this deal work. And that is a humongous price tag. Obviously not every team has that type of pick either. And I could see a, a trade happening where we see a first round pick exchanged in 2023. That's how desperate some teams might be to actually get Pasternak on the books and even though he does have one year left he is still in the prime of his career and I think so many teams are going to want that type of player and I also think for the team trading for him they'll make sure that an extension is in place. One team I think also makes a little bit of sense is the LA Kings if you kind of get past that cap space which I think they'll have enough to fit Pasternak on the book especially with Dustin Brown retiring I feel like the LA Kings make a lot of sense and they're one of the teams that can really afford to take on Pasternak and not not really feel too many losses obviously their first round pick would be a part of things and maybe even their 2023 or 2023 first if LA really is going for it and that could honestly be the type of price we see maybe two first round picks maybe even a good prospect on top of that that's kind of what I'm thinking Boston would be able to allow now obviously for the LA Kings as well as the Devils again I feel like an extension would probably be have to be close or at least pretty sure for a trade to actually happen but for a team like LA who's on the rise who wants to solidify themselves as a playoff contender, Poshnok is maybe the perfect type of player for them. They need some scoring on the wings and they need offense. And I feel like once you get that squad healthy next year, with that defense getting healthier, Poshnok, a part of things in that power play, would make LA's offense and that entire team so much better. And I could see a ton of teams out there with Kyle Space and with a lot of young assets being able to make this deal happen. Now there's a few more teams I could see fitting in quite nicely in this conversation. The Anaheim Ducks, just like the LA Kings, have a lot of great young assets and Anaheim is another team that's trying to get over that hump and actually be a playoff team next year after starting off pretty well this last year. David Poshnak would be huge and would really fix some of their biggest problems on that four group, as well as other teams like the Detroit Detroit Red Wings, who I think would be so fun with Pasternak. They might not be the team to do it since I think they're not quite on the cusp of getting out of that rebuild quite yet. But at the same time, I think their own first round pick, that eighth overall pick, maybe a second rounder, maybe a player like Elmer Soderblom could be enough to get the job done, but we'll see if Boston actually goes that far. Then there's another team which I think is a pretty big wild card, but would also be really fascinating in the Carolina Hurricanes. Obviously, again, cap space is an issue, but for Carolina, we know they want scoring on the wings, and that is their number one priority heading into this offseason, and... Poshnak scores on the wings and I feel like if they have the assets which I think they do and really want to go for it this next year which they probably do I feel like Poshnak fits a lot of those check marks maybe even they only trade to have him for one season and that's how much Carolina wants to win the cup next season especially so we'll see what happens there's going to be so many teams surrounding David Poshnak and there's going to be a lot of big trade offers out there. But I just see the LA Kings making the most sense. But just the fact that we could see a David Pasternak trade this offseason is insane to me. One of the best players in the entire NHL and looks like Boston might be blowing it all up. Now we'll obviously see if that involves a trade with Brad Marchand or any other players there. But I would expect if Boston goes in this rebuilding direction, it likely revolves around them building around Charlie McAvoy and probably um, of Jeremy Swayman. Besides that, I don't think there's many 
players off the boards here. We could see them trade Hampus Lindholm immediately after trading for him and extending him. We could see other players dealt, maybe a player like Taylor Hall, if they go that crazy. Patrice Bergeron probably won't get dealt because we know he only really wants to play in Boston or he retires. But that's a sad thing, man. I feel the worst for Patrice Bergeron, who put it all out there, has been dealing with so much injury-wise over the past couple of years, still winning Selkie trophies and playing so amazingly. And this is the thank you that he gets trading the franchise scoring face in David Pasternak and potentially blowing it all up after firing their big-time head coach. That's a tough blow. And I would not be surprised whatsoever if Bergeron ends up retiring this offseason too. But again, my bet is on the LA Kings to make this trade happen. I feel like it's going to be a solid deal. And hey, who knows? Maybe if LA is going crazy mode, maybe we see Quinton Byfield as the main piece of a trade. That would be really interesting to see. But let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the David Poshnock trade rumors. Where do you guys see him ending up? What do you see the trade looking like? And what do you think about Poshnock being on the block? Let me know all your thoughts down below. Make sure you share this video with your friends. Get it out there to anybody you guys know online, any hockey fans you guys know online. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And of course, click on this card for all my trade rumor content right on the playlist. My name is Nathan. Have a great day, and I'll see in the next one. Goodbye.